and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica and today's video is going to be a huge art supply haul. I think it may be the biggest art supply haul I have ever done on the channel and I'm almost kind of ashamed <laughs> to film it. However, most of the stuff was purchased with either gift cards that I received or credits that I had. I will have everything or as many things as I can linked in the description below if there is something that interests you. This will probably be a pretty long video so you may want to grab something to drink and get cozy and let's see what I purchased. So the first stack of things I'm going to start with are from other art shops that are not Amazon. So this first package here is from Art Toolkit. So I had stumbled upon their site when they were doing a seconds sale. And I had found this palette. I think this is called their Demi palette. It's their larger size. And they said that, well, the listing said that it was, had dented or scratch or something, but this thing looks pristine. I mean, I don't know where the issue lies, but this is, it looks like a brand new product with no issue at all. So score on that. I like these because of how thin they are and how many paints that I could take with me when traveling. And while I had that in my shopping cart, I also picked up some pans to go with it because as you notice, there were no pans inside. So these are eight standard watercolor pans that look like this. And if you aren't familiar with the Art Toolkit palettes, they are magnetic, so you can easily change out these pans. And then I also purchased this extra mixing palette to go in there. So next, it looks like an Amazon package, but it was actually purchased from St. Louis Art Supply. And what I got was the Art Nouveau Gonzai Tompi set. This was one of the only locations that it could be found during that time when it was super popular. I don't know if it still is, but I have it. When I first saw it, my thoughts were, it's very much to me, in my opinion, a Studio Ghibli palette. I'm thinking that I may do some redraws or screen cap paintings of some Studio Ghibli scenes with this paint. Then we have this decent sized box from Jackson's. In here, I got a grayscale value finder. This little box contains a bunch of Roman Schmal paints, watercolor full pans. So here are all my Roman Schmal watercolor full pans. This is Hooker's Green, Sap Green, Ocean Blue, Thalo Turquoise, Ultramarine Intense, Thalo Blue Green Shade, Buff Titanium, Oraline Hue, Quinacridone Gold Hue, Yellow Ochre, Magenta, Mineral Violet. This is a beautiful granulating color. Azo Red, Cypress Burnt Umber, Kaput Mortem, Payne's Gray, and Neutral Tint. Also in the Jackson's box, I got this 24 color set of Sheen Han Professional Designer Gouache. I wanted to get more into gouache. So here are all the colors in the box. Let's, um, let's open it up. So these are the different sets and all the colors they must have in their set. Here they are, all the tubes, and these are 15 mil tubes, which are a decent size. And 
And then the last thing I have in the Jackson box are these three jars of powdered pigment. I have this quinacridone magenta PR122, 50 grams. I have this cobalt cerulean blue PB36, 100 grams. And then this cadmium yellow PY35, 100 grams. I don't know if you saw my Christmas haul video at the end of last year, but I got some tools to make paint. And so that was one of my projects or things I wanted to try was creating my own watercolor paint. So these are the pigments I purchased. I figured I would go with the basic colors and then I could even play around with mixing my own colors. So I thought that would also be a fun experiment and a fun video to make. I'm just not sure when I will get to that. Next, we're gonna move on to my stack of Amazon boxes. So here is this pretty pink one. One thing I got, I guess that's not art supply related, um, but studio related is I got a pop filter for my snowball mic to hopefully improve my voiceovers. I got a bottle of Windsor and Newton blending medium. I read that this is good to put with your gouache if you're going to put them in one of those stay wet palettes. I picked up a package of Posca markers and these are all white but they are in a couple different sizes. So we have a PC3M, so like a small bullet point. We have the PC1M, which is very fine. This is a PC 5M. So this one is the chunkiest of bullet nibs. So I got these three different sizes to add highlights to either paintings or sketches rather than like a jelly roll or white gel pen. I also picked up this weird little contraption. Um, I guess it's called a painting pen. Now, I had discovered this in a video. I can't remember the video, but I remember seeing it and thinking it was so different and unique. But basically, so these are two separate pens and this is like a little, I think it's a cleaner. So, you take off this cap and what you do is you can put paint into this little pot and then it comes out this very fine, almost like a needle point and then you can draw or write with it. So I think the video that I saw, they used like the Fine Tech metallic paint and it looked very pretty and got very solid lines. So I just thought it was something fun and different, um, something you don't usually see. So I wanted to pick that up and play with that. This is the Schmincke Hordum Travel Urban Sketching Palette. It's almost like a whiskey painter palette. I love collecting watercolor travel palettes and I almost bought the whiskey painter palette itself without paint, but it cost just as much, which was kind of crazy. So here is the tin. It has a thumb ring on the back. It's pretty, pretty heavy. It has this lid that you pop off. This is going to be your water pot. Here is the twist top to the flask of where you would actually store your water. And then if you open up 
the palette. This is metal, by the way. Here is the actual palette. Here you have some mixing wells and then the six colors that it comes with. It also provides this little paper for swatching, but the colors you get are lemon yellow, cadmium red light, permanent carmine, ultramarine finest, Prussian blue, permanent green olive, yellow ochre, and sepia brown. So what you can do is actually pull out these metal pieces to get the paints out and you can add more rows down the center and then you can just put them back. So you can change out the colors if you want. They don't have to be Schmincke colors. They could be whatever colors you like. But I love little travel palettes like this. This one is pretty pricey. So it's definitely an investment, I guess. Next, I got some sketching stuff. So I realized I don't have an actual sketch sketchbook. I have a lot of like watercolor sketchbooks or thicker paper. So I wanted to get um, just a cheap sketchbook to doodle in or play in something that's very low pressure. And I chose this Art Creations Royal Talon sketchbook. It's 80 sheets and 90 pounds. So 140 GSM. It is this lovely blue color, which is my favorite. So let's open it up here. So it's got the book band and here is what it looks like. It's very cream colored, which I'm not sure if I'm a fan of, but if it's just going to be sketches, hopefully it's not too distracting. It's just something I'm not used to, I guess. But this is supposed to be a low pressure sketchbook. Paper feels okay. I don't know if it'll handle watercolor well. Um, so that's something I will have to test out. It also has the book ribbon. That's very typical with many sketchbooks. With that, I purchased this set of six Mars Lumograph black pencils. It comes in 8B, 7B, 6B, 4B, 2B, and HB. These are relatively soft pencils compared to harder ones. So I like that they come in this little tin. This is good for traveling with. I also picked up a Tombow Mono Zero eraser with two refills. This is just a really fine point eraser to get fine details. And then I got this cheap pack of blending stumps and sharpening papers to go along with that. Next box that is overflowing because I believe I condensed a lot of the packages to get rid of some of the boxes. So here we have a pencil case or art supply pouch. I also saw this on a YouTube video and really liked it. Um, it has some zippered pockets and pockets over here along with a pencil holder. And then it comes with additional pencil holders that are Velcroed in that you can take out. So I'm not a huge like colored pencil person, so I wouldn't really get a lot of use out of these. So I like taking them out and then filling this with more of my watercolor travel palettes. And even if you have a small sketchbook, that should fit in there. It is pretty deep and the packaging 
The material is pretty sturdy where it stands up on its own. So there's 12 pencil loops on each side because there are three double-sided pencil loops. That gives you the ability to hold 72 pencils, which is quite a lot. This is a mist spray bottle, which when using watercolors, it's good to spray them, but sometimes spray bottles can disperse too much water where this one's just like a shh, like a very fine mist. So these couple things, I'm trying to show things in groups as they relate to each other, but this is just an empty makeup palette that pops open with a mirror and a magnetic side. And so my thought process was, these are also a 56 pack of magnetic makeup palette pans that would go in. So this might be very similar to like a eyeshadow palette. But my thought process was, what if I bought this and made it almost like the Art Toolkit travel palette? So I will use these pans to put paint in, since I have a ton. And then I purchase this Rust-Oleum Appliance Epoxy. So this is what I would spray on the mirror side and that would become my mixing palette. So I saw a lot of people doing that, doing some custom DIY palettes, and I thought this was kind of genius because it seems to be, I don't know if it is anymore, but it see, at the time it seemed to be much cheaper than a travel palette because this case I think was less than $10, same with these pans. So plus this was, I don't know, eight, nine bucks. So all of this together and you could make multiple palettes seem to be kind of cost efficient and a fun DIY project. So on Amazon, I found this Schmincke Hordum trial set of five milliliter watercolor tubes. And it seemed to be quite a decent price for Schmincke colors. These are the ones that came in the trial set. Cobalt Violet Hue. Turner's Yellow, Quinacridone Gold, Potter's Pink, French Ultramarine, and Paraline Green. So I thought these would be fun to put in my Schmincke Travel Palette that I just got as nice additions. I purchased some glue dot adhesives and then this package of double-sided permanent tape runner. Um, just for like mounting some stuff and it seems to be less messy to do it with these methods. I purchased this Stay Wet Handy Palette. The dimensions are eight and a half by seven with one inch height. Um, I got this for gouache for keeping it wet. Sarah Burns uses this a lot, but I thought this would be really handy to have with that new gouache set I purchased. At one point, I considered doing a watercolor class, and I still might in the future, considering I have some supplies now, but I had purchased this pack of number 12 round Simply Simmon watercolor brushes because of the variety of strokes that you could get from this brush. And then what I was going to do was take these three watercolor Cotman colors of cerulean blue, lemon yellow hue, and permanent rose to make mini palettes to give out to each student and they would be able to use the palette for the class and then keep it afterwards to go home and practice. 
I believe I have some palettes in here somewhere that I was gonna use. Next, I purchased some vegetable glycerin. This was a ingredient for the watercolor paint when I make that. And then I got just a bottle of Basics Liquitex Acrylic Gesso. When I was planning to do my art markets, one thing I considered was doing these mini canvases paintings. So I got this pack. Um, they are the cute little mini canvases like this. I believe they are three inch by three inches. And I was going to do gouache paintings on them. There are 14 in this pack. They are 100% cotton and they are primed with acid-free acrylic gesso, but I was going to do another layer on them. And I was going to do mini canvas gouache paintings or watercolor paintings on them using watercolor ground that I already own. This was just an idea that I don't think I had time to sit down and actually do many originals. This is something I would like to do in future markets though, or just for fun to sell on my site. It's always so fun and so cute to have little mini paintings. And then with that, I got this little pot of Jacquard Dorland's Wax Medium. I saw someone using this to seal up some paintings and I thought this would be perfect to try with the mini canvases or just in a sketchbook as another option. All right, we are on to our last box here. Here is a pencil pouch, which is got to be one of my absolute favorite pencil pouches that I've ever found. This is a tr almost like a triangle shape where the bottom is wider and it stands up and then you unzipper it and the mouth opens quite a bit but it stands up straight, which is perfect and not something that I see often with pencil pouches. Now inside you have two side pockets and then on this side out here, you unzipper it. It's a place to hold maybe some pencils or markers or brushes, but it's also another opening inside the pencil case. It also has a large handle to carry around. And then it, on the other side, it has a closed zipper pouch that you can put some smaller stuff in. I really like this pouch, again, for probably the stand up reason, the stiffness of it that I can dig through without having to maybe pull out a bunch of pencils. And then it, if you have nothing in it, it folds up and shrinks to be quite flat for traveling. In this little box here, I have a bunch of little tins. So these little tins are so cute and they were my original plan to make the watercolor class palettes out of. I have a couple in each color. I think I have nine, so I think there's three white, three silver, and three black. This is the little tins that I was going to put the Windsor and Newton paints in. And I was going to fill out these, this package of full pans because you can get three full pans inside these little palettes. So that was my thought process for making the watercolor class palettes out of, which again, I still might do. Here we have just this big package of gum Arabic powder. This is food grade and gluten free. It's one pound. Again, this was just another ingredient for the handmade watercolor paint I'm going to make. Here we have the this empty watercolor palette tin. It says it holds 48 half pans or 24 full pans. This is what I'm going to put my Roman Schmall collection in once I do that video. But I needed something bigger to hold them all. 
I don't think there's a design on this one. Yeah, this is just, it's got the thumb ring, but it's plain black. And oh, it comes with the full pans already in it, which is really nice. I guess those are some extra I can have on hand. Now this is not big enough to put anything, any more pans in the center. However, I may be able to fit a brush or a pencil in there. And I see a lot of people take out these because of it doesn't, like it's hard to tell, but this does not lay flat so all the paint is just going to run down so I think what they do is they pull out a metal rod in here and then take this off and then only use this side because this one actually does lay flat it's also divided up much better than this side is because these wells are not very deep I picked up a small pack of Daniel Smith watercolor essential set. This has the Hansa Yellow Light, New Gamboge, Quinacridone Rose, Pyro Scarlet, Thalo Blue Green Shade, and French Ultramarine. These are the tiny five mil tubes. I think it's called like their, their mixing set or something like that. But this was going to be the paint that I put in my original art toolkit travel palette as just like a little mixing palette to carry with me and put in my purse. Inside this box is just a paint tube roller, I guess. Um, you put the paint tube in and you twist it so that way you can get every little bit of paint you can out of the tubes or it could be used as a toothpaste tube roller as well. Inside this box is just a mini foam paint roller with a paint tray. This was just going to be um, what I used to put the acrylic gesso onto what my surfaces. So nothing fancy here. These two sets are the Sheen Han Professional Watercolor Sets. This is the tint set, which are very like pastel colors. So let's open that up and take a look. Again, these some of these supplies were purchased around my birthday, which was like springtime. So pastel colors were very in when I was shopping. So look at these beauties oh my goodness and these are these are the bigger 15 mil tubes so the colors in this set are brilliant pink shell pink john brilliant naples yellow green pale emerald green nova horizon blue blue gray, lavender, lilac, purple gray, and neutral tint. So I think these are really pretty colors. Next is the set of 32 premium Sheen Han watercolor set. Now, when I first started watercolors on this channel, if you go back to the very embarrassing beginning, um, I had got a Sheen Han student grade set and I really loved it, used it for years. So I really enjoyed the brand. So I wanted to test out their professional grade. Again, these are the 15 mil tubes, so much bigger. I feel like you get a lot for your money when you purchase with Sheen Han. So in the box comes this little pamphlet of all their colors and the light fastness ratings along with the ASTM. And then on the back, which I really like, shows you how to read their labels. So that's really nice. But this is going to be a really nice set and it's a lot of paint that will last you a long time. 
then these boxes are also really nice that they come in. They are very sturdy. And then last, lastly, I have this giant Masterson's Artist Palette. It's a stay wet palette. And my original intention for this very large palette was for my oil painting class Evolve that I was doing. I still have every intention to continue it. Um, it's just that I've gotten really busy and other things have come up. So I've put that on the side burner for now. But I thought this would be able to hold my oil paint palette whenever I have to pause a painting. Oh my gosh, it is very hard to open. Um, it's kind of expensive for just being a basic plastic box, in my opinion. Um, but I guess it has an airtight seal. The dimensions of this is, I believe, 12 by 16. And it says, um, for oils, place your favorite type of palette, wood, glass, plastic, or paper into the palette seal tray, snap the lid on. Your paints will stay fresh for many days, even weeks, while they are sealed in the airtight Masterson palette seal. So I guess I will test that out and put that to use once I get back to my oil painting classes. So that is it for this video. Obviously, I can't even fit all the stuff I went through on this screen right now, but these are the main paints that I purchased and things I'm most excited to play with. So let me know in the comments below if there was a product that interests you or you want to see a video on first because I can definitely bump it to the top of my list. If you like the video, make sure to hit like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!